Hey guys, so for today's video, I want to go over some trigonometric identities and their derivations. So the first thing that we need to know is the most important or most fundamental form of trigonometric identities or equations. When you say identity, you're basically re referring to an equation. So basically, uh, let's say we have one over sine of theta. Now, I hope that you know already, and if you don't, well, now you're going to know that if you have one over sine theta, this is simply going to be equal to cosecant. We write CSC that is going to be cosecant theta, okay? Now, this also implies that if you have uh, one over cosecant theta, well, this is going to be equal to sine theta, okay? These are different relations that you're going to have with these two equations. And also from this, you can, you know, you can reason that if you have cosine, uh, cosecant theta times sine theta, well, that is going to be one, okay? This is a, that is a scenario that you will encounter when you're doing, I don't know, maybe derivative or solving an integral. You're going to find moments when these two functions are going to be multiplying each other, and it's going to be way easier to simply erase them because they're going to be equal to one, okay? And that is really going to help you. Now, more equations that you need to know. If you have one over uh, cosine theta, this is equal to secant theta. If you have, uh, and also once again, you can make this in relation, that if you have uh, one over secant theta, this is gonna be equal to cosine theta, okay? Oh, theta. This is true. Now um, we're missing the equation for tangent. So we also know that one over uh, tangent theta is gonna be cotangent theta. And that means that uh, 1 over cotangent theta is equal to tangent theta, okay? So these are probably the main equations that you need to know. I hope that if you're watching this video, you know, just uh, write them in your notebook or just have them in your mind present uh, because we're going to use them in a moment, okay? Now let's begin deriving trigonometric identities. So the first identity that you should know is this one. Uh, if you have sine squared theta, if you remember, this notation is simply going to say uh, sine theta, and whatever sine theta is, you want to square that value, okay? This is what sine squared theta means. Now, if you have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, this is going to be equal to 1, okay? Now, this is one trigonometric identity that is super useful because if you know, basically, if you have the value of sine, you also have the value of cosine, okay? Because now you can solve for cosine, and that means that you also have the value for tangent because if you have sine and cosine, well, remember, another trigonometric identity is that uh, tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, okay? And now I'm going to show you why these two, uh, these two equations are true, okay? So now, to prove these equations or these identities, we need to go to the unit circle. Now, I'm not going to draw the entire circle, but I'm going to only make the, I'm only going to draw the positive quadrant, okay, which should be something like this. Yeah, I'm going to use that, although I can make this line better. Okay, let's say this is the line. Now, we know that if this is the unit circle, then we would have a quarter of a circumference, something like that, yeah. We know this point over here, it would be zero, our x point, and one, okay? Remember, the unit circle is a circle that has a radius of 1. Now, this point over here, uh, we know this would be uh, 1, 0, okay? And now, say you simply have a line that goes something like this, and it's going to touch this point on the circumference, and of course, you're going to have, you know, your right triangle. Now, what we can do to prove these two equations is the following. You can define this angle to be theta, and now, well, you know that if you want to find the sine of that angle, you can do the following. You have sine theta would be equal to, uh, remember, it's the opposite sine, uh, the opposite side, I'm sorry, the opposite side dividing the hypotenuse. Now, the opposite side, we don't know what it, uh, how much it is just yet. It would be this height right there, this side. But we do know how much the hypotenuse of this triangle is. That is going to be 1. So uh, it, it is going to be something over 1. Now, if we really want to find how much uh, this side is, well, remember, we can say this is simply going to be, I'm going to write it over here, let's say it's x, so you're going to have the, uh, 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 no, I'm sorry, it would be the height, yeah, so if you have uh, x is the height of the triangle, so we know that sine theta would be the opposite, x over the hypotenuse, which we know it's 1. Now, this means that simply sine theta is equal to x, and if you think about it, well, we also know that x is going to be the y-coordinate for this point over there, Okay, 
this point is basically going to be, um, we know that if this point is sine theta units up, because you can see the height, you can see that, well, the height is going to be x units up. And we know that x is equal to sine. So if you have an order paired like this, well, we know that the y value would be sine theta, okay? I hope you can see it from there. And now what about the x value? Well, we can do the same thing, but now we will try to find uh, this side over there, which I'm just simply going to call y, okay? So once again, we can go uh, cosine theta now. We're going to use cosine. We know that cosine theta, that is cosine, would be equal to the adjacent side, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which we know is 1. This just simply means that cosine theta is equal to y, okay? I know I should have actually changed the letters because it will be confusing now, but you know that y in this case would be the horizontal distance and x would be the vertical distance. Don't be confused about that. <laughs> so yeah, we know that y in this case would be the, you know, you could say the width of the triangle, okay? And now we know that this point over here, well, we're going to move y units to the right side to get to that point. And we know that if those that amount of units is equal to y and y equals cosine theta, well, now we can write that this y chord, this x coordinate is cosine theta, okay? And I'm actually going to write this again because I used uh, way too, I, I should have made, made it bigger, but what I'm trying to show you is that cosine theta is going to be the x coordinate for this point over there, and this one is going to be sine theta, okay? And now you might be wondering what does this have to do with these two equations? Well, if you want to find the sides of this triangle, you know that y squared, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to write it, I'm going to write it over here, I'm guessing. So let me do it like this. We know that y squared plus x squared, which would be the size of the triangle, uh, we know that y squared plus x squared is equal to 1, okay? That is the radius or the hypotenuse of the circle. Well, they have the radius of the circle, hypo hypotenuse of the triangle. Now, we know also that x is equal to sine theta, and if sine theta, uh, sine theta, well, is equal to x, so you can replace x in there. Or, well, you can change x and plug in the value of sine theta. And you can do the same for y, okay? So you're, you're also going to have, um, yep, you have cosine squared theta plus a sine squared theta. And this is equal to 1, okay? And now this is the, this, you know, this derivation takes into account that this triangle has sides sine theta and cosine theta, okay? The, the, you know, the width of the triangle is going to be cosine theta and the height is going to be sine theta, okay? And since, well, this is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is this one up here. And you can replace the values, and you're going to get our first trigonometric identity. Now, another thing that we really want to do is that if you want to consider the coordinates of this point, and you want to use that consideration to derive this equation, well, something that you can do is that if you have the unit circle, remember that the equation for, for a circle, that um, this is the equation for a circle. Remember, you have x minus h squared plus uh, y minus k squared and this is equal to the radius squared. This is the equation for a circle. The unit circle, we know that h and k, they are zero, and r is equal to one, so the equation for the unit circle is also gonna be x squared plus y squared is equal to one. And once again, the same logic that we used up here, well, you have x and y, and you know how much x and y is. So you can just simply plug in sine theta and cosine theta into this equation, okay? And you know that because you know that for any point they have on the circumference, of the circle, the coordinates are going to be cosine theta and sine theta, okay? And that is, well, because of this equation. Um, so this is how you can derive, or the logic that you can use to derive the first equation. I know if you're wondering about tangent theta equals sine theta over cosine theta, well, you can do the same, you can use this triangle that, that you have in here. So if you want to say, uh, I think you, you know what we're going to do. If you know, if you want to find tangent theta, you know that this is going to be equal to the opposite side, which we know is x, over the adjacent side, which we know is y, and we know that x is equal to sine theta, and we also know that y is equal to cosine theta, okay? And there it is, your, you know, your famous trigonometric identity, which is probably the first identity that you learned, and that is pretty simple, but, you know, here's also uh, the derivation. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, these two trigonometric identities, they are going to be the most important thing for deriving other trigonometric identities. So in the following video, well, I hope, um, I hope that I will show you how to derive more equations like this. So yeah, I hope you learned something, you enjoyed this mini lecture, and yeah, see you in the following video.